For a while now, I've been speaking about a podcast called Interrupt. It's one of our newest shows produced by TSC Studios. Also, my friend and also one of the trainers here at the Sales Evangelist, Linda Yates, and I had this discussion, and we wanted to make sure this podcast got out there. This podcast and is it's designed really to help women leaders. So many women leaders have struggles or have challenges to progress or to get their seat at the table because of the bureaucracy, the way things are set up, where sometimes in some organizations still today, it's a good old boys club. But we're going to talk about that. This podcast is mainly a lot of guys listen to this, so I want you all to listen and to understand some of the struggles challenges and struggles and to hear how you can help some of your female counterparts get their seat at the table. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we're going to talk to Linda Yates, who's one of the coaches here and trainers at the Sales Evangelist. Linda is also known as the Image Energizer. And today, Linda and I are going to talk about the podcast that we just just launched on TSC Studios. It's going live real, real soon. And I want you guys to hear all about it and how you can go ahead and, and check it out. But this podcast is designed to help women leaders learn how they can get their seat at the table. But today we're going to talk about guys and how we can help our counterparts who are trying to get their seat at the table and reach their ambitious goals to make that happen. So listen with an ear of how you can help and some of the things that maybe we have not thought about from a female perspective, understanding what they're going through, some of the struggles, and what we can do to be of assistance. Welcome to the show, Linda. Thank you. I am so excited to be with you, Donald. Oh, I'm excited to have you as well. I'm looking forward to this. I've been bragging about you in a teaser and we've been talking about Interrupt and everyone's getting excited. They want to hear about this podcast and and why it's so awesome. So I'm looking forward to pick your brains a little bit about that and talk about it. And, and some of the ideas, particularly around this topic, though, about how us as male um, in, in sales can better understand what are some of the challenges our female counterparts are facing when it comes towards leadership, challenges that we may not necessarily understand and what can we do about it. But before we dive into that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you, Linda? I, I bragged about you as you know the, some of the things that you're doing, but talk to us a little bit. So I'm known as the Image Energizer. I help individuals and organize organizations tap into their most positive, profitable, and professional image, be it through self-image, to speaking skills, to leadership skills, to what's going on in, the, in their head, all those sorts of areas. And i am that's where basically I'm focused is individuals, leaders, and helping them rise to be and fulfill, quite frankly, their dreams and their goals. Awesome. Well, it's, it's great stuff and, and we love it. And we're grateful to, to be able to have you come and to share some of these insights with us because I think that brings a unique perspective as well. You work with many different organizations and your experience in corporate America and also your experience running your organization and also having some of those leadership experience as well. So let's type it, let's dive into it. We, we want to be better, but we don't understand. So Linda, if you don't mind, just maybe to highlight to us some of the top challenges that women leaders are facing right now. Those who are trying to rise, uh, raise themselves into the on a corporate ladder or rise up on a corporate ladder. What are some of those big challenges that they're facing that we may not understand as, as uh, guys? Well, one of the things that are still is still a major challenge, and it's pretty crazy that in 2020 we're still talking about this, but there is definitely a pay, there is not a pay base across the table. There, there just isn't. Male counterparts typically will make more than a female counterpart for, for pretty much almost every role, but especially roles that are in, in leadership. And that needs to change. That needs to be talked about and be at the table. So if you're, if you're a leader of individuals in your organization and there's some pay disparity, I would challenge you to really rethink that and, and change that and make that. So that, that's just one. That's just, that's just, that's just well, fact. Let's, let's tackle that one because I want to keep going. But where did that idea come from? Where did that notion come from? Because it just doesn't make any sense to me, <laughs> you being a you know, younger millennial, like how, how in the world that could happen where, because you're doing the same exact role, but a guy would get more than a, a, a woman. Well, I think, again, it is time and the involvement of the women in the professions. I mean, quite frankly, men 
jobs that are in leadership roles used to be all done by men. Yeah. And women came in to, to different professions in a different way. And things are starting to change, but there, there is still that disparity. And that's, that's, you know, that's kind of a, a big topic that needs to be addressed. And you and I are, aren't going to necessarily solve it today by any means. But it's that, that feeling that women were maybe seen as, as subservient to male counterparts. They were more in admin roles rather than leadership roles. And quite frankly, I started my career in an admin role, and I'm very grateful. But I was really blessed throughout my career to have mentors that saw the possibilities in me that raised me up, that pulled me up, quite frankly, up that corporate ladder. In fact, I think about two particular individuals. One was a female, one was a male, Scott Ward and Carolee Monker. They were asked to lead the Department of Physical Therapy at University of Utah. Yeah. Because the individual that they had was was canned. <laughs> and neither one of these two individuals wanted to take on that leadership role totally alone. So they were unique and the pioneer in that they locked arms together and they moved forward. Now, I'll tell you that both of them were mentors to me, not just Carolee, a female, but Scott was as well. They both saw in me the possibilities and they said yes. And in fact, I was promoted that position. I had started in an admin role. Mm -hmm. And also what had occurred is we had an academic advisor that was serving our department as well as the medical school. And they, so the budget was shared. Yeah. And her name was Charlene. And Charlene couldn't manage all of the in all the people interested in physical therapy. So basically, I was eight months pregnant. That's a whole nother story too. <laughs> but I was eight months pregnant. And I went to those bosses. And I said, Hey, I've got an idea, you pay me this much more money. And I will do both jobs. Hmm. And you know what, they saw that I that the possibility that I could and I was with that organization over six years and it, it is still today one of the best positions I ever had and it's kind of crazy that I ended up leaving but I knew that I needed to grow and anyway another story but those individuals saw in me the possibility to lead. And I had to believe in myself that I yeah. could do it, but I had to have others that believed in me. So I think that's one of the challenges too that we see is that mentor. And that's one of the things we talk a lot about in Interrupt, Empowering Female Leaders, this awesome podcast that we're getting ready to launch, <laughs> is the fact how important mentors are and how the different women that I've chatted with have been mentored by others. Lee Carraher, one of the first episodes, we talk about that. And one of the things we also talk about is that women often feel like they're an imposter, which they shouldn't, but I mean, I admit that I have felt that way. I felt that way a little bit, quite frankly, when I started on my own business. I felt yeah. this imposter syndrome. Of, are they really gonna find out that maybe that I'm still learning? Yeah. <laughs> And I think that women sometimes think, to, think that they have to work harder and be even smarter than their male counterparts. And that has got to change. We've got to just support all of each other. No, you bring up a good point there. And I think some guys probably don't even think about that. One, one example that you and I talked about before was, I remember hearing this, that most guys, when it comes towards a job application, if there are nine or 10 things on the application and the guys could qualify for six, he's going to apply. But a female sometimes may think, well, I don't qualify for 10 of them, so I'm not going to qualify. Is that, how, how can, you know, is that something that plays with it as well? I, I, and we, as guys, we don't understand. So we're trying to understand here, how, why, why is that the case? Um, and help me to, to get better understanding of that part. You know, um, maybe women are more in, in broadly, and this is so broad, and I really yeah. hate to stereotype anyone, right? Because sure. there are some women that, in fact, that's one of our episodes. We talk about the fact that I'm driven. So does that make me a bad mom? <laughs> we go through that. We no. go through that guilt, and that's another thing that, you know, that we all have to understand that a lot of times women feel guilty. Yeah. They feel guilty because there's these two opposing areas maybe in their personality and the fact that they, that they're a driver and they want to achieve to, to your point, to your question. I think that women have a tendency to hold back because again, maybe that imposter syndrome or they, that bravado is not as strong for them. 
yeah. they're not willing to really go to that point until mobile I've really done it in the past and I've got a mentor and a champion telling me or leading me or pulling me along. Yeah. I mean, I know men that do it too. I have oh, to admit. Do it. Well. Do it. So <laughs> again, it's not a stereotype, but yeah. it, it is kind of what happens. You've got to believe that you own that seat at the table. Hmm. You really do. And that's what this podcast is talking about. So, so far we talked about the pay gap. We talk about the idea of, uh, of, being willing to own, uh, you know, the, the imposter syndrome and how we can overcome that. What are some other challenges that you mentioned one? And I, I thought it was, we've talked about this before as well. And I, I just really fascinating in your story about you being a mom was, is that one of the challenges that many women face that you know of that are mom? And, I think so. I, I think that's a pretty common, I mean, I know i pretty much worked since my oldest was six weeks old and I worked full time. And that was really hard to hand Trevor over to the babysitter. And even though the babysitter was my sister-in-law, yeah, as I went to my job and sat at this desk and just cried and cried (laughs) because I had just handed my, my baby over. And what I had to learn to do, quite frankly, Donald, is I had to learn how to compartmentalize things. Hmm. where I had to kind of put those feelings in and that energy, if you will, or the worry if with regard to, to Trevor in a little file drawer and be focused and be in the moment at my work and, and be exceptional at my work. However, that's always still there. That's yeah. always still on, on my shoulder. You know, what's always was on my shoulder as well was the fact that, you know, got to get home, got to get food, got to keep the house put together, you know, all that home caring thing. Now I happen to be really blessed because I am married to an amazing man who probably did more than I did in those areas. I admit he did. In fact, for a period of my, in my corporate career, I was traveling every other week. I was in a major city every other week. Mm -hmm. And as I was in that other city, Doug was keeping things going. And quite frankly, it was awesome and it was great. It was supportive. It allowed me, I was really fortunate to marry a man that would allow me to grow and do and and seek and pursue in ways that I wanted to. And he he didn't hold me back. Not all women are that blessed. And that's one thing that I think men need to be cognizant of, not necessarily that there's anything to be different, but just be aware. And I guess Mm -hmm. that's really the thing. And be aware, quite frankly, just my, even my male counterparts, they may have a lot of things going on that I don't understand. And just giving them, putting the attitude that everybody's doing their best. Yeah. And I hope that everybody's doing their best and I'm wanting to do, but most people are trying to do their best, trying to do the best they can every day with what they've got going on in their life. And I think you, the, the, the critical part there is, is pushing yourself to do your best, right? And then also tying back to the, the notion you, you also shared about guys being willing to help out. Uh, because again, we're not in, back in 1940. Um, not, right. not in Absolutely. It's the words like <laughs> <laughs> it's, from, it, it needs to be a true partnership. And I know some folks listening to this may not necessarily have the, a partner or a husband, wife or whatnot, but the, the idea is that you're, you're a true partnership when you are working with your spouse and if, you're, if your wife is, is trying to advance. And I think I'm going, I'm going to speak to this part a little bit. I think sometimes folks get intimidated of a, a woman that's some, let's, let's say some guys get intimidated by a woman that is trying to advance herself and then i think that brings this notion where it's like or even i hope this is not in any relationship that anyone that's listening to this podcast where they feel that if their spouse is doing better than them financially then Mm -hmm. that might be a a cause for a challenge have you ever heard about that or seen oh absolutely (laughs) absolutely i worked with there was this organization i worked with and at one point a manager was hired and I had a director role. This individual came in as a manager and this individual, male individual, he really let me know <laughs> in, in, in not so subtle a terms that, you know what, he was going to be my boss. 
Wow. And so he was newer, <laughs> younger. <laughs> and I, quite frankly, was taken back by his brashness, if you will. Yeah. And so I, uh, and in some ways, I probably kind of came into myself and I wasn't as assertive, quite frankly, as I should have yeah. been. And those were some lessons that I had to learn. And it was interesting because I'll never forget, we were giving this presentation to a, it was a nationwide audience. Mm -hmm. And he, he was kind of shocked at the end of the presentation on my part. He said, wow, Linda, that was really good. Of course, I'm Linda <laughs> Yates, goodness <laughs> sake. <laughs> oh, well, I was so, I was so angry because i thought who are you you know with the whole put down thing <laughs> and i and i had to create i had to create i had to create mental a mental fence and you know what you can't and a boundary if you will and you're not going to tell me how i feel about myself and <laughs> anyway that that just became that became it was a, it was a really interesting experience and he eventually you know he he uh, perpetrated fraud and he was gone, but oh yeah. Oh, so, oh. yeah. And you know, Ken, you're going to run into one of the programs that I put on is how to deal with jerks. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've had experience with that. That's just, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll, you'll probably have an episode on that on your podcast. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure we can <laughs> check with that there. Um, Linda, let's go into the second half of this. Now we want to, we understand some of these here and they're probably, this conversation probably could keep going for a while. And obviously that's why you have a show where you talk about all of these tackle, but let's listen for the audience here. Some of these guys who are here now, let's tackle some of these. We talked about the pay gap. We talk about the, um, imposter syndrome, talk about the fear of doing better and so forth. Um, and what can we do? What are some of the kind of the things that we can leave this episode with and we could tackle maybe some of these here that can guys can do to, to do their part to help. I, I think that you need that looking for individuals, female individuals that you can mentor and champion, champion up or champion over. And just the fact that you recognize someone's strengths and look to lift them, pull them you know, pull them over to move forward with and really respect their seat at the table. You know, one of the things, one of the reasons we named this podcast that we did, I don't know if you've ever noticed that people get interrupted even when they're presenting an idea sometimes. And a lot of times what happens, a woman's presenting an idea and a man will try to talk over mm. her. And I love what Lee Carriher said. You know, I keep talking about her episode, which her episode was just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Is that but your she, first she, episode? Um, <laughs> it, it is. It's episode, episode one. I do a beginning episode just talking about the podcast, but that is our first episode. So I'm excited for y'all to, to listen to that and watch it on, on TSC Studios. <laughs> you like that plug? There you <laughs> <Donald>. go. <laughs> so one of the things she talked about, I asked her, I said, so what do you do when you're interrupted or when you've been interrupted? And she lays out a three-step plan, basically, <laughs> what she does. And she's like, no nonsense, and boom. And I, I gained a lot from that, and I appreciate that. When you interrupt someone, you're not really listening. Mm. And you are seen as a more effective leader, the better of a listener that you are. And listening is just, just so key. So I think that's one of the big thing is listen. Listen, don't interrupt your female counterparts. Put a hand out to champion or mentor your female counterparts. And if you are own if you own the business or you're head of your division and you've got budgetary approval, you have that's within your reach, you see if there is disparity in the type of roles that are happening. And if there is, change it. So I guess those would be the main things that I would say. Well, let's talk to an example. I'm, I'm an individual contributor working in a company. I carried a quota. I'm an account executive. I, did, I do have close relationship with my teammates and found out that one of my colleagues who is more qualified than me and she is making $5,000 less than me um, and she hits quota as well. How, how do you suggest that I approach that um, wow. as a male? Well, I I would be very impressed to see you as an ex account executive go to management 
mm. and say, hey, I understand that this is happening. You know, I, I don't feel that this is right. And I don't think that this is empowering to the mm. organization because quite frankly, you know, there's, if we each, you know, just because she makes less than I do doesn't mean we're going to be more profitable. You're going to be more profitable at the end of the day. And perhaps that motivation would help. Yeah. And I guess just having that conversation. And I think that's where it comes down to, right? Where, you know, sometimes as males, we need to be willing, because I, I think in sometimes in sales, we kind of fall into the world of like, it's a, it's the lone, lone lion, right? You're excuse me, lone wolf syndrome where, Hey, I got to take care of myself and take care of my own. But in order for us to be able to rise as a pack in order for the group to continue to thrive, we have to be willing to do that. And I feel that especially if the top contributors, the people that are respected in the company, if that salesperson walk away, they're going to get hurt. The organization is going to hurt. Those people can make an impact and just raise your voices. And I think we're in this era where, you know, companies recognize that if the if the team members um if the, you know they'll protest they'll they'll revolt so to speak <laughs> right. they're not going to pull up for for garbage and it's imperative that we make sure that we we come to the table and 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 raise our voices so really i think like what you shared there just being being willing to have that conversation and being willing to bring that up to management it would be crucial right and i want to i would love to hear how that that goes i would I would applaud anyone that has the, the, you know, the willingness to do that. And quite frankly, it's confidence in you because then you're mm -hmm. going to be showing that you're an even better leader. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really at the end of the day, what will happen. One of the things we talk about too, in the interrupt podcast, we have Charlotte letter, Charlotte Leonard on who talks about race basically mm. and the challenges of race and being brought up and owning that seat at the table. And one of the things that she talked about was that there's not a lot of mentors. And so, again, looking for the people that you can champion, champion up, champion over, mentor, mentor up. That is just really, really key. Yeah. I, I've been thinking about it here in this capacity. Like in, if I'm a sales rep, there there got to be other team members that are coming up that are BDRs or in you know, business development reps that are probably you can see something and then give them some advice and uh, not. And I, this also is critical too. I think sometimes when a female, and I know we've had this discussion and I've heard this in the industry, sometimes when a female individual who may be um, not as tenured as a male counterpart comes with, you know, requests for help or for mentorship, sometimes they get the wrong feeling. I think that mm -hmm. that, that means like it's a head on. You know, right. You've, you've, hit, you've seen that before, seen that in your, in your world. Yeah, abs absolutely. They're, you know, we come from, we come from different walks of life. Yeah. And the goal is to really see the individual for who the individual is, respect, give respect to everyone, uh, trust and open that door. And it's, it's not, it, it's not a, I scratch your back, you scratch mine or whatever <laughs> the case may be. Yeah. It is really, truly seeing what's possible for that individual, you know, and I've had, I've had some amazing male mentors, you know, Scott Ward was one of them that I mentioned. John Eunice was another one. He saw me, he saw the possibilities that I had. He was actually one of my first admin jobs that I ever had. And he still to this day basically touts the fact that he had, he was, laid out with back surgery and they were they were just they were young family they were having uh, they just had a new baby and he talks about the fact that I kept his his business running and I was the <laughs> secretary of the organization and John still kind of touts that you know that you know the fact that I stepped in and I appreciate the fact quite frankly that that he didn't see me as a you know, whatever object, but he saw what I brought to the table. He saw that I was organized. He saw that I was a go-getter. He saw that I communicated, that I listened, that I cared. That is one of the biggest things is just to care and, and see just being, just being a good person. Because if I lift you up, we both rise together. Love it. So. Linda, this has been amazing. If folks out there want to get in touch with you or to learn about the podcast, where can they go to do so? 
So the podcast is being produced by tsestudios.io there you go. backslash interrupt. And interrupt is spelled I-N-T-H-E-R. R-U-P-T. So go check that out. It's going live September 21st. So excited. You can also reach out to me individually at Linda, L-I-N-D-A, at L is in Linda, H is in happy, Yates, consulting.com. Linda at L-H Yates, consulting.com. And I know that your phenomenal team will have that in the show notes. Awesome. Well, Linda, we appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate your wisdom today and insights. And let's go interrupt and, and make, some, uh, and make some, some waves, some good things happen. Thank you, Donald. Appreciate you. That was Linda Yates, host of Interrupt, also the image energizer and one of the trainers and coaches here at the Sales Evangelist. If you'd like to get a chance to connect with Linda to learn about the podcast, you can go to tscstudios.io slash interrupt. That's I-N-T-H-E-R-R-U-P-T. That's I-N-T-H-E-R-R-U-P-T. We're super excited. And if you want to be on the launch list when that podcast go live or you know somebody that can benefit from that podcast, simply go ahead and go to that website, uh, that show, that page, and put your email address in and we'll keep you notified when the episode goes live. Also, I want to tell you about a couple things. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit subscribe to this podcast. If you're watching for the first time, I would, I would just... It, it would make my day. I, I would be greatly appreciative of that. If you're listening on um, Apple Podcasts, it's easy. You can do that there, Google Podcasts, or wherever. If you're watching this on TSC Studios, go ahead and subscribe to our channel because you can be notified of all of our great upcoming episodes. And one of the new things that we're starting to do, if you pay attention to our channel, we're doing the playlists. I know we have tons of content, and we want to make it easier for you to digest them. So we're going to go ahead and put them on playlists so you can find those episodes, the ones that you love and you need right now easily. You can see that. Just go to YouTube if you're listening and search The Sales Evangelist or Donald C. Kelly and you'll come to our page. I'm super excited for you. I'm super excited for this new launch of this new podcast. My goal with the show, is, as always, is I want to help you. I want to help you to find more of those ideal customers. I want you to become a better person, a better sales leader, a better individual. I want you to know how to close those deals once you're actually talking to those people. I want you to be able to go out, most importantly, each and every single day and do big things. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools and things that are going to help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.